It is natural to want to be married. That is a God-given desire. But it is not natural for a Christian to put anything before loving God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And girls, with our minds, we really struggle with living in a fantasy world. Yeah, you with me? We fantasize about who we're going to marry. And oh, does, does he like me? Does she like me? Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. Josh and Anna's update. A lot of you have been asking for an update on Josh and Anna. Well, I cannot speak to Josh and Anna today. I can only speak to what I heard recently when I spoke to one of Josh Duggar's friends. Well, I would say loosely a friend, a former friend, maybe friendly-ish. Someone that he met back in 2015 and 2016 when Josh was in time out at Reformers Unanimous. Back in 2015, let's take a walk back, Josh was living the high life. He was working in Washington, D.C., lobbying and helping to get the youth involved in politics. And his big platform was all about promoting Christian family values and espousing a belief of what he called traditional Christian marriage and his decision and their other platform was around women's rights. And Josh, using this platform, traveled uh, to various college campuses. He had this bus he rode in. He gave speeches. He lobbied to lawmakers. He went to Tennessee. He went to all these different places to make a difference. Well, he was exposed in 2015 for alle over allegations of what happened in 2002 and 2003 related to an investigation with uh, Josh involving some minors. And then there was also an affair that was revealed. Josh was caught on a website called Ashley Madison. He had two separate accounts and he also had accounts on OkCupid and Josh admitted to being unfaithful to Anna. While Josh made the submission, this was when the Duggars decided that he needed to go to Reformers Unanimous to get help for his problems. When this all came out, a woman named Danica Dillon, who was a film actress for adult films, made some claims and she also filed a lawsuit against him for an incident that involved her and Josh with what she could, what I could best describe is her claiming it was like being essayed by him and she was suing for damages. Now that case ended up getting dismissed and I believe they settled, but that, that fact, that detail is going to come into play in this, in this video. So Josh publicly denied he knew this woman. He denied that he knew anything about her. He denied being there. And in the case, he wanted her to say that they never met and she refused. She has stuck to the story for the entirety of the time she's had the story since 2015 when Josh was arrested back in 2021. She came back out and told her story. Well, now we're going to find out from what jo a friend of Josh's that claims that Josh admits that this situation happened, allegedly. And some other information about Anna and Josh, along with some confessions by Josh that were shocking. So let's dive into the topic. Before we do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and make sure to click on the bell so you never miss a video. So now that we've painted the picture, 2015, Josh is sent away, the Duggars are humiliated, their show gets canceled, County Non comes back, but Josh is away at this place called Reformers Unanimous. Now Reformers Unanimous is part of the IFB. It's, well, yeah, it, this specific branch of it is located at a independent fun fundamentalist Baptist church in Illinois. And Josh was there for a program for about six months. Okay. So while Josh was there, he was supposed to be getting help to deal with what he had discussed as in a public statement 
and a problem with viewing content online and a problem with his being unfaithful to Anna. And this program was promising to help him free himself of these problems. So I've told you in the past that people that work there have told me that what the program consists of is reading Bibles and working and basically saying that as long as you read the Bible and get into God, you're going to fix your problems. Okay, so Josh was there. Now, when Josh was there, he apparently made a friend. Obviously, because this happened years ago, I can't sit there and like contact Reformers Unanimous and say like, did this person attend your place? But I was given a copy of their diploma from Reformers Unanimous. They graduated the exact same month from Reformers Unanimous at the exact same campus as Josh. And they also verified phone exchanges with Josh from years ago, okay? So they were able to prove to me that they were at this place at the same time as Josh. When he went there, a couple years ago, I told you about a woman that worked there that said that Josh was pretty arrogant and they alleged that Josh had no remorse for what he had done, didn't care the, the damage he had caused or the pain that he had caused anyone, and that he really was doing his own thing and didn't seem to take the whole program seriously. That's not how the Duggars would have painted you as the picture, but that's what was going on. So what this friend told me was they were actually in the facility at the same time getting help for the same thing that Josh was getting help for, but not for the same problems. So they alleged that they were not unfaithful. It was more just like they were spending too much time looking at adult content. And because of the way that this, this cult works, they believe that no one can look at adult co content and like even looking at it is an addiction. It's like you can't even if you're consenting to look at it and you look at it once a year that they would consider that like an addiction. It's pretty wild. And I want to note that addiction to adult content is not recognized by the DSM, the DSM-5, which is the psychological um, manual for diagnostics. And so this facility cannot bill health insurance for that. The friend says that while they're there and they're, he explains that they work almost all day long and they don't make really any money. They're doing work for Reformers Unanimous. They, they allege that they're also told to apply for food stamps while they're there. And then the food is brought to the facility. There was a lot of things that they said that were pretty shady, but those were some of the things that they alleged that the, were the most shady was one, they had to apparently allegedly apply for food stamps and then the food would go to Reformers Unanimous. And then two, they were working constantly but not receiving any money and the work was benefiting Reformers Unanimous. And then three was that very little therapy was actually being done. During this time, they became close to Josh because they're in close proximity and the program was about six months long. And according to the friend, this is what they said, had the friend said that Josh had no remorse about anything that he had done. In fact, they described Josh as sort of being like cocky and bragging about his exploits. The friend even said that Josh flat out admitted to them that he had been unfaithful with Anna with Danica Dillon, who is that's her stage name, the woman that had gone public and sued him, but that they were taking care of it and handling it in court and that they he was going to make it go away. So even though he was saying publicly that this didn't happen, he was telling people privately that he did this to Anna. This situation with the dancer and with the adult film, film star was also admitted to Josh. Josh admitted to his family about apparently, and this was what the family was more upset with to them. They were more upset with Josh about what happened with her than with the damage he had caused when he was 15 with the minors in his life. So he allegedly admits to this friend, yes, this happened with Danica. I've never admitted publicly. We're taking care of it in the courts. We're going to make this thing go away. Apparently they could have visitation and they talked a lot about their marriages and their relationships during this period. And the friend said that Josh was didn't really have the nicest things to say about Anna, wasn't very, like, the best I can describe it is that Josh didn't view Anna with a lot of respect. 
And Josh didn't act like he had really done anything wrong to Anna. And he didn't really value Anna beyond what she could physically do for him. That's what the friend had alleged. And I've heard this before about Josh. So that didn't surprise me. But what did surprise me is that the friend said that when Anna would come to visit, whenever they could have visitors, and when she would come, she would wear pants. And so she would show up at Reformers Unanimous for visiting and she would have jeans on. And that was something that really surprised the friend because this was again at an IFB church where women don't wear pants, but it was Anna was wearing pants. So Anna had been wearing pants as far back as 2015 and 2016. And it's, it could very well be like she was wearing pants the whole time and was just publicly wearing a skirt or a dress, or she could have started rebelling and wearing pants once Josh was caught being unfaithful, which wouldn't surprise me. But once Anna was there, the friend said that it, they didn't act like there was any strain in their relationship. Now, a couple years ago, I said that someone that was working there said that Anna acts very much like a shell around her and that Anna appeared to be kind of broken during this period. But this friend said that when they were with them, and that was a staff member, so that might have been Anna doing an act for the staff member. But the friend says that Anna and Josh were like completely all over each other. They were all over each other in the fact that they were like, there was no acknowledgement that other people around them that might be watching them. There wasn't a lot of modesty when it came to this. So much so that on one visit, the friend said that when they were walking into their unit and they were walking into the kitchen of the unit, they caught Josh and Anna with their pants down in the act, allegedly. And that they don't think that Josh and Anna saw them, but they were surprised to see Anna acting as though she was this meek, mild woman publicly when privately when she was visiting Josh they weren't missing a beat and neither one of them seemed to be taking the situation all that seriously now I did express to this person like listen Anna wouldn't have had a choice if Josh wanted to do it he she would have had to comply and if Josh has had to be without whatever it is that his fix she would have had to done that and they agreed that it could very well just be that this is Anna performing her duty but they did note that, and again, this is all alleged, that they don't think, one, that Anna and Josh saw them, and two, they said that even if that was the case, they didn't witness this happening with any other people at Reformers Unanimous. So Josh didn't care about the rules. They were not supposed to be bringing their wives into this area. This was a private area for the patients, um, and... Josh did ha apparently had no regard for other people's privacy, allegedly. So Anna is publicly acting meek with staff acting meek. But then when he's engaged with Anna and around friends, Anna's not acting like that. The next thing is not about Anna. So that's what I have for you about Anna. This other part is kind of disturbing. And if you are sensitive to this, you might not want to listen. We all know that Josh was arrested in 20... 21 on one count of possession and one count of downloading CSAM. We know that after a jury trial in 20 December of 2021, Josh was convicted of both counts and one of the counts was dropped. And then he was later sentenced to 12 and a half years in federal prison with 20 years of supervised release. Once he's out, all kinds of release stipulations. And he was sent to Seagaville, Texas, where he has been since July of 2022. Josh has denied his guilt. He has claimed a million different ways that it was someone else. It was a shady ex-con. It was, he found it by accident. Uh, it was Caleb Williams. He appealed it. All of his appeals have been denied. So when the friend reached out to me, they said to me, I'm contacting you because one, Jill had just written her book and they said, what Josh did is not isolated to what happened in 2021. And I said, oh, okay, what, how do you know? And again, this is all alleged. Again, this is their account of what happened. And most certainly Josh and Reformers Unanimous would deny this. But again, because this involves patient privacy, I can't go to ask Reformers Unanimous for their side of the story. Please take this as the account of the friend 
and know that there's going to be denials on the other side. So the friend says that one night he and Josh are talking and uh, they're having this like conversation where they're discussing why they both were at Reformers Unanimous. And he says, he tells Josh that he was there because he was viewing stuff online. And Josh admits that too. So he says that he and Josh end up in this conversation where it's almost like they're trying to one up each other about the kind of content that they're into. And they're going into kind of graphic detail and, you know, sharing, you know, what their, I guess, fetishes are or what they're, what, what they enjoy looking at the most. And it's at this point that Josh tells him that he's actually not into adult stuff. The stuff he really is into is the CSAM. The friend says he's absolutely like shocked that Josh would want to admit this to that the, Josh is confessing this to him and he doesn't know what to do with it. And he says Josh takes it a step further and he pulls out a phone. And I said, Josh had a phone in there. And the friend said, yes, Josh actually had snuck in burner phones two reformers unanimous and was using like a phone on a fake, you know, just like a buy, you can buy them at the supermarket, Walmart, whatever. And he was using one. It's the same kind of phone that Josh was caught using at the prison and, or, you know, same kind of burner front phone that he was using at the prison that he was caught with and put into solitary for. And the friend says that Josh is like explaining to him how you can actually access this kind of content online. And Josh is actually taking out his phone and showing him websites that you can go to where you can find this content online. And I was like, so he was viewing this content at Reformers Unanimous on a burner phone. And they said that they didn't see any of the content themselves. They said that they didn't view any of the content with Josh, but Josh was showing them how you can access this content online. And I said, well, was it on the dark web? And they said, no. So I don't know how they were, how Josh was viewing it, but that admission left them very, very disturbed, rightfully so. And they said they finished up their conversation with Josh after he confesses that he's into this kind of stuff. And he says the next day he goes and talks to staff and lets them know about what Josh had confessed to them. And he alleges that the staff at this facility tells him that don't say anything about anything to anyone. Don't tell anyone anything about anything. Don't say a word about this to anyone about Josh. We will take care of it. So they said that they were expecting that reformers unanimous would contact authorities because Josh was like admitted to this friend that he was viewing this stuff while he was there. And he didn't want to be party to any sort of like crime, right? So he assumed that they would call police and that police would get involved, but that never happened. So when he approaches the staff again, he asks them a second time about what they, he told them about Josh. And they told him, don't you dare tell anyone about what you were told by Josh. Don't mention a word of this to anyone. You don't know anything about Josh. They felt like it was like a th threat that like if he did do something, something would happen to him. And so he just said he kept quiet. And because he had reported it to the facility and told them what was happening and they didn't move forward with anything, he felt like there wasn't anything more that he could do. And I said, well, why didn't you call police yourself? And apparently that's not what, when they were there, they didn't, he didn't have access to phones. And there was a lot of fear about if he did, like the exposure that he would have. So, cause God, uh, Josh is good at like framing people for things. So anyways, he said to me, Josh was confessing to him back in 2016 that he was looking at this kind of content and that this was something that he had been consuming online and downloading and participating in online for years. And I said, well, they only found a certain amount of it on his phone and or on his desktop and they only took one of his phones. And I said, how was he viewing this? And they said, well, Josh used burner phones. 
and they didn't the feds did not recover any burner phones from Josh they only had an uh they only had a search warrant for one phone and so the friend suspects that had they had a wider net and tried to get a hold of maybe phones that Josh had had access to that were not his phones um, that maybe they would have found more but on the phone that he had his iPhone they didn't find anything and the friend said that he would never have used his own iPhone for that he would have used like a burner phone so when Josh was sentenced the judge said that Josh was a deleter and that he was very sly and sneaky about how he accessed this type of content and the friend was like that this was his experience is that Josh was using burner phones. He was looking at it when he was supposed to be getting treatment and he was, it was sick. And I said, well, then why did you continue to, cause they continued to communicate even after they left for a while. And he said that after that, he figured that Josh just dropped it and stopped looking at it and didn't bring it up again. I can't explain why the friend would think that, but this again is the IFB and men will explain away a lot of things that other men do. The last time that they he spoke to Josh was a couple weeks before the raid in 2019. And Josh was supposed to come to his wedding and then he said that Josh told him he couldn't go to the wedding and then Josh stopped communicate, communicating with him and he said he never heard from him again after October of 2019. I asked them, why are you speaking out now? And I said, and they said, because they just wanted people to know from their experience with Josh, that Josh's habit was far worse than it was described in court and that Josh should have been given more time behind bars and that they fully believe that even once Josh is released, he will not stop. They had none of this information at trial. They didn't speak to anyone from Josh's past about this. I don't think they even considered talking to anyone from Reformers Unanimous. So that's what the friend said. And the friend said now that they want nothing to do with Josh. They would never speak to Josh again. And they were just tired of keeping that secret. So that's my update on Josh and on Anna. Josh remains behind bars in Seagaville. He has denied that he has ever downloaded or consumed any content related to CSAM despite being found guilty in a court of law, and he maintains that he is innocent but is serving 12 and a half years. Anna has steadfastly stood behind her husband, has also denied his guilt, and continues to stay with Josh despite his incarceration. Anna has not been seen recently visiting Josh after he lost his appeal, and Josh will not be eligible for parole until 2030 two at the earliest. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.